All right, we just talked about purine de novo synthesis and pyrimidine de novo synthesis. Now let's talk about a condition, a clinical correlate to uh, our pathway that we just covered. We have hereditary erotic acidemia. All right, what is it? Well, it's an autos autosomal recessive disorder. And what it is, is it's where you have a UMP synthase enzyme that does not work. Uh, I did show a little snippet of what we just covered, and uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. However, I do want to point out that erotic acid builds up. So let's move over. Uh, we have pyrimidine de novo synthesis pathway. We are not recycling anything. We are, we are making uh, pyrimidines. So pyrimidines, remember, are going to be your C's and your T's. Uh, also your uracils as well. But uh, we have our uh, PRPP, and that came from a ribosylated ribose, and that combines with erotic acid, and that's going to be forming UMP. So how does that happen? We get two reactants, one product, that is moderated by UMP synthase. So we look over here, UMP synthase enzyme is non-functional. So we're going to be focusing on this enzyme. It's actually made up of two separate functions, two separate enzymes uh, into one complex, the orate phosphoribosyl transferase enzyme and then the ornidine monophosphate decarboxylase enzyme. So if either one of those is absent, what you're going to do is you're not going to be able to create UMP. What that's going to do is it's going to build up your erotic acid. You may have an increase in PRPP, but remember your PRPP can go on to make more purines. Uh, instead. So what you're going to really notice is you're going to notice an erotic acid buildup. So erotic acid levels will increase. Also note that if you're not able to make UMP, you're not able to make CTP or DTMP, which are both required for DNA synthesis and mitosis and DNA replication, etc. So if you're not able to make these precursors for DNA synthesis, uh, that may explain some of the symptoms that we see with hereditary erotic acidemia. So we'll see megaloblastic anemia. What does that mean? Well, we'll have large cell, megaloblastic, meaning large cell uh, anemia. And also we may get infections because our immune system cells are not able to turn over, to replicate at a high enough rate. So we may see infections as well. <coughs> For treatment, treatment is going to be simply uridine supplementation. If we're able to supplement this, we're able to create more things downstream. Even though we're missing our enzyme, if we give supplements, uh, our enzymes down here work. I, I left out a lot of stuff, so be sure to watch the purine and pyrimidine synthesis video if you haven't. However, uh, just know that megaloblastic anemia, which is uh, interesting note, it's going to be refractory to B12 and folate. Uh, supplementation. Megaloblastic anemia, you may see it in a B12 deficiency. You may also see it in a folate deficiency. Um, I do have vitamin videos on that which kind of explain why. Uh, however, notice that megaloblastic anemia is also a symptom of uh, this UMP synthase deficiency disease. So that is hereditary erotic acidemia. If you have any questions, any comments, please like, please subscribe, and have a good day.